Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of our Listen to the Mrs. podcast, coming to you from the studios of WSGW Radio in Saginaw, Michigan. Mm-hmm. I'm Art Lewis. I'm Ann Williams. And we talk about food, lifestyle, recipes, fun stuff. We just have a good time talking about it with you mm-hmm. here on our podcast, mm-hmm. usually once a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to start today. Uh, I think if, you, uh, if you're a people watcher and you look at folks around the country, you will know that belly fat is an issue. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. Difficult one to fight. Too. It is a difficult one to fight. Not easy to lose the weight. Harder than uh, finding ways to quit cigarettes and other things. Mm-hmm. But... I've got a list of foods, superfoods, that will promote weight loss naturally. Okay. Now, again, like all things, everything is based on moderation and balance and all of that. But I'll just run through this list because there's a bunch. Some of them you may like. Some of them, you for like me, you go, eh. Let us start with asparagus, hmm. full of prebiotics, which help good, uh, good gut bacteria flourish. And you can add asparagus to omelets and pasta and soups and all kinds of things. Avocados contain monounsaturated fats, good for your heart. Bananas are good for it, full of magnesium and potassium, both of which offset the bloating caused by salty processed foods, which you want to stay away from, of yeah. course. Beans and lentils, rich in fiber and plant-based protein. Berries, cup of berries. With nine grams of fiber and antioxidants. Chickpeas, eh, not my favorite, but they're healthy for you. Great source of fiber and plant-based protein. Citrus fruits, coffee and tea. Dairy products, which surprised me. Mm -hmm. One cup of low-fat milk during breakfast and a half a cup of low-sodium cottage cheese will help reduce body fat and belly fat. Foods contain calcium. They help reduce waist circumference, according to studies. Didn't know that. Hmm. Eggs, rich in protein. Fermented foods like miso and tempa contain probiotics or good bacteria. Various herbs and spices, healthy alternatives to salt, which is what you're looking for. Leafy greens. And how often do we hear we should be eating leafy greens? But I stopped in my track when I read this because it says leafy greens. And the next word in the sentence is cauliflower and other leafy greens. How does mm. cauliflower get to be a leafy green? Is it part of that well, family? I think maybe they're talking about cruciferous vegetables and Ooh. cauliflower is one of those. So What was that word? <laughs> cruciferous. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Nuts, almonds, peanuts, pistachios, and walnuts. I don't see cashews. I'm so disappointed. Mm. Oats, olive oil, extra virgin, E-V-O-O, make you feel full. Onions, peanut butter, peas, potatoes. Baked potatoes are full of potassium. Potatoes are healthy and filling foods as long as you don't fry them. Mm. Pumpkin contains fiber. More fiber than quinoa, actually. Salmon is good for you. We've already known that. Various kinds of seeds like pumpkin and sunflower seeds are good for you. Sweet potatoes and other orange vegetables like butternut squash are low in calories and rich in beta carotene and potassium. Tomatoes can help you stay hydrated. They have a high water content. Tuna, rich in omega-3 fatty acids and lean protein. And whole grains. So there's the list. Mm -hmm. Eat the list. Lose your belly. Well, the belly fat is the one they say you really need to worry about. Um, Fat on other parts of your body are not as dangerous, but the belly fat can be dangerous. It can cause, lead to other problems. Mm Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so uh, you have uh, some goodies for us. Well, um, when we were doing our daily radio show, we like to talk about what food was being celebrated on a daily basis because every day is a food holiday. But every month is as well, uh, and some weeks are. So we thought we would talk about, uh, since uh, it's early September, we would talk about what foods are being celebrated during the month of September, and there are quite a few. Mm. September is National Chicken Month. (laughs) It's National Honey Month. Mm. National Mushroom Month, mm-hmm. National Papaya Month. National what? Papaya? Papaya. Really? Potato Month, Rice Month, 
It's Better Breakfast Month. It's hmm. from the All American Breakfast uh, Month Council, I guess. It's California Wine Month. It's Childhood Obesity Awareness Month. September is also Family Meals Month. That makes sense because mm-hmm. I think you know people are kind of coming together back again after sure. you know school starts and all that. Fruits and Veggies Month. It's Hunger Action Month. National Biscuit Month. It's National Bourbon Heritage Month. National, I mentioned chicken. National Cholesterol Education Month. National Food Safety Month. National Hazelnut Month. Uh, let's see, I mentioned honey mushrooms and papaya. Uh, National Hunting and Fishing Day is September 28th. World School Milk Day is September 25th. Bi- Biscuits and Gravy Week, they have a whole week, September 8th through the 14th. Uh, International Housekeepers Week is September 8th through the 14th. National Farm Safety and Health Week is September 15th through the 21st. And National Waffle Week is September 1st wow. through the 7th. Bunch of stuff in September. So that's happening <clears throat> as we speak. How about that? Mm-hmm. Uh, this, uh, of course, for me, brings back a lot of childhood memories because I was born and raised in New York City. Cat's Deli. Mm-hmm. You ever been to Cat's Deli? You've been I'm to not, New York. No, no? I've been to New York, but not to Cat's Deli. Well, Is that Katz, the one made famous in the movie? Yeah. How well, Harry Met Sally? Yeah, Cat's Deli and the pastrami is world-renowned, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the pastrami is, is what you go for. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you know. And, of course, if you lived in Los Angeles, you'd have a tough time getting Cat's Deli because you'd have to fly to New York to get it. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Cat's Deli did, recently did a pop-up in Los Angeles. Uh, and uh, up until August 25th, you were able to get a kit featuring their pastrami, rye bread, mustard. And um, now it appears they're not opening a shop in Los Angeles but there is something in Los Angeles called the Family Style Food Festival, September 15th. And uh, Katz's owner, Jake Dell, has said that uh, they are going to be there. So Katz Deli is going to have a booth in this Family Style Food Festival mm-hmm. with their famous pastrami. And, I mean, it is to die for. Oh. I read something the other day about how the traditional deli is kind of going away. They have changed. Um, yeah. Now, when I go to New York, um, I'll either go to Katz or uh, my favorite is called the Second Avenue Deli. Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, it is a kosher deli. Mm-hmm. Even the sign in the Second Avenue, it looks like Hebrew script the way they write it out. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's um, it's tough anymore because, you know, we used to have neighborhood delis. Yeah. But the neighborhoods have changed. Yeah. And and the and uh, families evolved. Families and evolved. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, it's mm-hmm. it's true, and and uh, so consequently, the restaurant scene changes. But mm-hmm. that that's true of every uh, every type of uh, food, ethnic food that you can find, mm-hmm. with the exception of maybe of Chinese, which seem to grow on walls. <laughs> I mean, right. They are everywhere, mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. So what else you have? Well, I have uh, this article actually was uh, published on the wa- in the Washington Post back in June. So it's uh, kind of in the mix now. It's, it's 10 food trends that you're about to start seeing everywhere. So some of them we should be seeing already. Some I've already seen. One of them is collagen in food, the additive collagen. Really? Um, they claim f- collagen is something that's our body produces, but it helps right. elasticity mm-hmm. and helps things bounce back. It's in a lot of cosmetics and things. Exactly. Well, they're putting it in food now because they say it helps to give you smoother and more supple skin. Ooh. Dermatologists are skeptical, but they're adding this to some foods now. So that's one. Another is uh, boozy and booze-adjacent tea. You know, teas, lots of different kind of tea drinks mm-hmm. on the market. Well, now they're they're trying out tea drinks that have alcohol added. <laughs> <laughs> um, they've got something called Owl's Brew, which is a canned sparkling beverage that combines tea with a malt base. Uh, so there's a couple of those on the market. So watch for that. I'll tell you the one I don't want to see. Hmm. I don't want to see an alcohol-infused energy drink. <laughs> Can you yeah, imagine that, that's a kind of bad drunk isn't it? with his energy pumped up? I would say that <laughs> kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah. Here's think. another one, though, kind of related. Sober curious. Now, you might be able to relate to this. Sober curious. Ooh. And what they mean by that is people who want to explore not drinking alcohol, but they want to have, like, fancy drinks. So 
The idea is, it's they say sober, sober curious is a lifestyle choice, like doing a cleanse or going to you know a festival. Um, they're making festive beverages that are booze free, but are more sophisticated than seltzer or soda. So there's something, there's one called Toast, which is a dry effervescent drink made of white tea, cranberry, and ginger. Comes in a wine bottle, so it kind of feels celebratory. (laughs) Uh, There's also something called Ovine, which is wine water. Uh, It is sparkling water made from grape skins. So they're making things that kind of make people, and they have that now. I mean, you, you can, can buy like a sparkling yeah, I mean, wine you always, that you has always no alcohol. Get non-alcoholic versions of but drinks. But I guess they're kind of playing it up Pina now. Pina coladas more. and things like that. Yeah. Uh, when we cruise, you know, I, I being a teetotaler uh, on Celebrity, they have a drink called a watermelon tropic. Mm-hmm. And I get it all the time. Right. And it's a variety of fruit juices, and it's different layers. They don't all meld together. Oh, okay. So you have a kind of a yellow to an orange to a red. Mm-hmm. And I guess the idea nobody now nobody know that it wasn't alcoholic. Yeah, you I know? guess they're just kind of pushing a little bit forward now and making more of these kinds of products. Yeah, uh, something else, puffed snacks. Um, the basis for this seems to be: what if cheese puffs were vegetables? There's a surge of puffed up, crunchy snacks on the market with ingredients like chickpeas, beets, quinoa, and kale. Companies want you to feel like it's okay to eat a whole bag. So you'll, yeah, you know, I've I'll been bet they do. Some of those, yeah. <laughs> um, there's a company called Vegan Robs, and he has an entire line of better for you puffs, like sorghum turmeric puffs, spicy probiotic oh. dragon puffs, spinach puffs, cauliflower puffs, beet puffs, and Brussels sprout puffs. Lovely. All right. All right. Here's another one. Um, <clears throat> oat milk. Oat milk is everywhere. And guess what? I I told you in our last episode we talked about uh, saving money and how apps can help you yeah. at the grocery store. Well, a free coupon on my app, my Kroger app, the other week was for oat milk. Oh, a no whole kidding. Half gallon of Did oat milk. Did you try it? I, it was free. Why and? not? It's not bad. Huh? It's okay. still in my fridge. I haven't drank it all, but it's there. I was already kind of on the non dairy milk yeah. train already because I've tried oat, um, mm-hmm. almond milks and some different ones, and it's really not bad. It's yeah. pretty good. Good. So there's that. Um, something else called. Uh, Popped lotus and water lily seeds. Um, there is a company that's making traditional Indian and Chinese medicine. Uh, that you pop these lotus seeds, and they're like a snack, like popcorn. Oh, no kidding! Yeah. Oh, cool. So, um, I know in our house anyway, we always have leftovers. Do you know the best way to serve leftovers? No. Is to someone else. <laughs> I don't mind leftovers. Uh, this is an, it is, here's but. an old New York proverb, and I love this one. And it's old, you can tell by the price. A nickel will get you on the subway, but garlic will get you a seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the best thing you can say about gravy, it has no bones. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so much for that. Oh. You got a recipe for us? Yeah, we like to share uh, one of the recipes from our vast file. Um, this one is called Easy Please and Meatloaf, since it's getting into fall Ooh. here, you know, kind of a comfort food. It's a good one. Who doesn't like meatloaf? So, this is one that's been popular uh, two pounds of ground round, it calls for, a cup of water, a half cup of barbecue sauce, a package of stove top stuffing mix, any variety. Two eggs beaten and a cup of chopped onions. That's optional. I would use them if it were me. You mix that beef stuffing mix, the water, eggs, onion, and a quarter cup of the barbecue sauce. And this makes two loaves. You want to shape them into oval-shaped loaves. Put them on a 9 by 13 inch pan side by side. Top them with the remaining sauce. And you bake these at 375 for 35 minutes or till. They're no longer pink in the center. And if you want to, you can freeze these. Mm -hmm. Easy, pleasing meatloaf. And you can get in touch with us if you would like to hear a recipe on the podcast or you have an idea for something you'd like us to talk about. Get in touch with us. You can reach us on our Facebook page. You can reach us uh, on WSGW.com. There is a Listen to the Messages tab. Go there. Or you can uh, email us. Mine is Ann at WSGW.com. And mine is Art Lewis at WSGW.com, and that's L-E-W-I-S. Mm-hmm. And that'll do it for this Listen to the Mrs. podcast. We thank you for joining us. We'll talk to you down the road.